Hi everyone, welcome to another session of valuing analyzing companies. In today's session, I will be analyzing and assessing the firm and equity value of Warner Brother Discovery. Uh, to provide you with some context, Warner Brother was acquired previously by AT&T. No surprise, like 70 to 90 percent of mergers and acquisitions, M&A deals uh, turned to be a bad investment. Warner Brothers acquisition by AT&T was not an exception. So AT&T decided to spin this business off and it was acquired by Discovery. So we are looking at a new conglomerate named Warner Brothers Discovery, which has all the brands that Warner Brothers had, such as HBO, uh, DC, and uh, as well as whatever Discovery had. So the new company that we are looking at contains all these brands and franchises such as Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Batman, uh, etc. There's a channel here on YouTube called Company Man. I have no affiliation with him. He puts weekly episodes on his YouTube channel where he goes through the story of companies, which is pretty interesting, educational and entertaining. And one episode is specifically on Warner Brothers uh, that I found pretty interesting. A lot of information that I didn't know uh that which doesn't have to do anything with this valuation but it's just entertaining to learn about if you would like to um, learn more about it i have the link of that video in the description again no affiliation with him but just for fun and entertaining purposes just feel free to watch that video in addition to that i will be having the link to this collab file that we're having in front of us as well as the valuation model that i've developed with python i will be creating a walkthrough video on how to use the script that i've developed with python to value whether warner brother disney microsoft uh, amazon any company that you would like which i will leave the link to that video somewhere here in this video with that said let's value warner's brothers they produce content they produce movies that we should show in the uh, movie theaters but they also do broadcasting they also uh, sell those contents in terms in form of DVD or digital uh, m m forms, or you m could pay subscription on HBO or HBO Max uh, to actually watch those contents. So that's how basically Born and Brother Discovery are making money. One thing to note is the amount of debt that the new company as Warner Brother Discovery has. The new company has $53 billion in debt. Out of that 53 billion, 87% of that is having a fixed interest rate. 13% of it is variable, which means it's based on whatever the market interest rate is in the mar uh, is in the market. Currently, the 10-year T-bond is about 4%. The corporate BAA bond is about 6%. However, the average cost is about 4.3%. And that that is going to mature 30% of it within three years, 10% of within three to five years. 20% within five to 10 years, and 40%, a big chunk of it will be due within more than 10 years. So you could safely assume about 60% of it, more than half of it at least, is not due in the, within the next 10 years. This is a very important information. We're gonna get to it at the end of the valuation, uh, but this is just parking the behind, in the back of your mind. Uh, currently, HBO, HBO Max, uh, if you're in the United States, you perhaps um, either subscribe or you've heard of the service. It's just essentially just equivalent to Netflix. You subscribe and you watch content. They have Harry Potter, uh, Batman's, and uh, many, many, many more uh, contents that it's their or their own production, or they pay a license fee to put it under their library. Currently, Segment has about 81 million subscribers as of second quarter of 2022. I just want to do a back of the envelope. What would be the expected revenue they could get from this segment? So let's say uh, they are aiming for uh, 120 million by about 2025 or 2026. That's the management guidance. Let's say they get to 160, whatever that judgment day is. Pick your number, 2027, 2028, 2029. Um, and currently they charge about 10 to or $15 if you are if you go ad based or ad free based let's say in the, within the next at least 5 or 6 years they are you know raise prices and the average price would be about 15 so the revenue that you can expect from this segment would be 28 billion or 29 billion on that judgment day whatever that whatever that day is so 2027 or 2029 you pick your year I just want to get a back of the envelope how much revenue are we talking about from that segment? And the rest of it would be from CNN, from advertising, from content licensing, from production, etc. So I'm just trying to estimate what amount of revenue I should expect to assess what growth I should give to uh, Warner's Border Discovery. 
And the new company, of course, is again, as I mentioned, is is, is restructured. They have a lot of debt. The management um, objective is, you know, paying down paying down the debt. Uh, they kill several contents that were in the pipeline that were going to pre- being produced, which I, I see it as a good sign. They understand the concept of sunk cost, and a lot of managements don't uh, quite understand this and. Once they spend, uh, you know, a few million dollars on a project, they keep spending more and hoping, you know, it turns out positive or recovers. Just like going gambling, you lose first few games and you double down to, you know, come make a comeback. And ninety nine percent of the time that doesn't happen. That's really essentially the concept of sunk cost. And it really takes discipline to understand what it's a good investment and what's not. If you at some point you gotta you know, cut your losses and walk away. And that it's a really a psychological pitfall that most people will fall into it. Therefore, I find the management discipline, understanding the concept of song cost and being objectively after uh, optimizing for cost of goods sold and operating margin. Let's look at the financials. In terms of financials, there's not much to infer because the new company as Warner's Brothers Discovery is just two quarters old, if you would say. Uh, so there's not, the history is not that much reflective, but it could be used as a guide. And that's exactly how I'm using it. So the current revenue is about 9.8 billion, a lot, roughly about 10 billion. And the gross profit margin before the merger was about 66% after the merger, well, tanked, it went to uh, 42. But again, the management is optimizing for uh, profitability. Uh, same thing with operating income. The operating income, well, pre-pandemic was about 30% for discovery. For Warner's Brothers discovery, right now is about, you know, negative uh, 3%, negative, negative 37% for the two quarters ago. Last quarter was 22%, negative 22%. Uh, but we also see this uh, decline throughout the pandemic. Again, before the mergers of Warner's Bar Discovery, uh, the operating margin was somewhere about 20%. The main question is Warner Bar Discovery uh, recover and where that terminal operating margin would be. Would it be somewhere between 17, 20, 22, 25%? What that number is, and no one has the crystal ball, neither do I. But no harm trying. I would use the historical sales to cap ratio as well as the comparables to kind of evaluate how much they have to reinvest back to the business. So for themselves, for 2020, that number was about 40 cents, which is in line about with Disney and Comcast. Netflix has higher number. They you know generate more revenue related to the assets in place. I'm also going to look at the operating income adjusted for R and D. For Netflix, that number is about 23, 24 percent. Uh, Comcast, that number is about 18%. Disney is about, well, Disney is also is, is having, is making some recovery. So that's not really that much relevant. Uh, so, but discovery itself, you know, historical, historically before the merger was about 30%. So the question that I'm trying to answer is where that terminal operating margin would be. And I tend to think that number is somewhere between 20 and 30%. Uh, so 20 somewhere around like 18 would be like my minimum, very conservative estimate. Uh, And maybe 23, 24 would be my base case. Up to 26 would be acceptable, but then, you know, more than 26 would be, I would would be surprised. And then, you know, anything above that is just icing on the cake, if you would say. Let's talk about valuation. For valuing Warner Brothers, I'm going to value the firm, which, is going to be the value to the bondholder and the uh, stockholder. Then I'm going to subtract the value of debt and find out what's going to be left for the equity holder in the business. This is essentially the model that I have developed, but I don't want to bore you and going line by line throughout the model and what I'm doing exactly, but just to understand some high level parameters that is needed for the model is the risk-free rate, which I use the 10-year T-binder, the equity risk premium, which I use the implied equity risk premium that Dr. Aswath, the Moderan, publishes on his website once every month. The revenue base, I'm using the last quarter number multiplying by four, roughly speaking, uh, and then I'm giving them some growth for 
between 6 to 11% for three years, and then another cycle from 4 to 8 to 4, and then another cycle that lasts for two years from 5 to 4. And the sales to capital ratio that I'm assuming for this business is going to be from 60 cents and reducing it to 55. And the reason I do that is because so they have the HBO Max set up, they have the, they close the deal. A lot of infrastructure is set up, so they don't have to reinvest as much, but they definitely need to still reinvest to get those growth. So that's why I push up the sales capital ratio uh, a bit higher than where it is relative to what the numbers you see on the balance sheet. The current margin is about you know negative 22% as we looked at, but these numbers are going to be from next year. I'm assuming the recovery is going to start from next year and you know the margin is going to get positive from 3%. And gradually over this valuation period, which is going to be three plus three plus two, which is eight years, we're going to get to 23%. So if you look at this model, it's essentially think of it as if it was an Excel file. You know, here's the revenue columns, here's are the margins, here's are the growth. So I'm using that, you know, growing that 38 billion by 6% for next year. And the year after that, I'm going to grow it by 8% and then 11%. And then the growth is going to slow down to eight, six, four, five, four, four. And this is going to be my terminal year. And throughout this uh, process, you know, the margin is going to go from three to six to nine to 12, 14, and ultimately you're going to get to 23%. Here's going to be the EBIT earnings before interest and taxes. This is the sales cap ratio that I talked about. So the difference between these two revenues divided by sales cap ratio is how much they actually need to reinvest back to the business. So you have the after-tax operating income, you have the reinvestment rate, you have the reinvestment, you get the free cash flow to the firm, and you discount that at the cumulative weighted average cost of capital because this is the cash flow to the firm, to the bondholder as well as equity holders. So in this column, we get the present value of free cash flow to the firm. And here are that essentially the numbers that you're, the, the ultimate number that we are looking at. So get the summation of the present value of free cash flow to the firm, add in cash, uh, the firm value comes to about 81 uh, billion, 81.5 billion. billion. Now they have 50 billion in debt. So the intrinsic equity value in the business is about 31 billion. The stock is trading about 28. So I find it roughly about, uh, you know, 10% undervalued, but this is a point estimate. There's a lot of uncertainty around a lot of these numbers that I talked about. I really don't know what the operating margin would be. I really don't know where the sales to capital ratio for this new company really would be. Uh, I tend to think the management is, is better than the previous one, uh, but I don't know how well they would uh, uh, execute. And I don't think really if anyone would know, and that's really the beauty of the equity market. But if it's our job as an investor, to find out what the intrinsic value of the company that we're investing in is. The more we do research, the more certain we become about these parameters. I find simulations to be effective way to deal with this uncertainty. Now, what do I mean by that? I developed a Monte Carlo simulation, the CF model, which is really not rocket science. What it is, is I am, for instance, very uncertain about the terminal operating margin. What I would do, I would go and randomly draw a number between 17% to 30% for 12,000 times. And I do a DCF calculation, exactly what I what we did above. And I arrive at the number and I do it again. I do it again and I do it again over and over. And I do it for every parameters that was set into the model. And I come up with this histogram. It's going to show me the range of reasonable equity stake in the business. The different scenarios is essentially that could play out for uh, Warner's Bar Discovery. Essentially, right now, if I were going to pay the fair price, if I were going to pay the 50 percentile of this distribution, the 32 is about my point estimate, which is very similar to what we did above. The lowest number should be about 18 billion and the highest number should be about 47. Current price of the uh, business being between my low and medium, if you would say. I find the Warner's Brother Discovery to be underpriced relative to its intrinsic valuation based on the story I said above. And given, you know, dealing with this uncertainty with this Monte Carlo simulation, I feel comfortable 
having it into a diversified portfolio. Again, that $50 billion debt is, is a lot. If something goes wrong, the, the company that has debt puts you more at risk. I personally would take some position at Warner Brothers. This is, it looks too cheap for me to overlook it. With that said, I hope you find this session useful and thank you very much for listening and learning about Warner Brothers and Discovery with me. Who knows what Warner Brothers uh, name would be in the next 10, 15, 20 years. I hope there is no more spin-off or acquisition for this company, but if history is any guide, this company has been a spin-off, acquired, a spin-off, acquired over and over and over. Uh, so I don't know what, what I'm going to call it next time when I make a video about <laughs> Warner Brothers, but for now, uh, let's call it Warner Brothers Discovery and I see you in the next video.